In the past, I've enjoyed using Lizardman fire builds against the Tomb Kings. Once we got the fire slot, it was fun to synergize with Salamanders, Solar Engines, and now we've got a new infantry unit that can also synergize Chameleon Stalkers with a Kindle Flame. I mean, they already do a lot of burst damage with their precursor weapons, so... Let's see, this is an awesome battle. No specific units to highlight here. Maybe I'll make this a highlight about the salon, but mostly just the general build of the Lizardmen against the Tomb Kings. Uh, myself versus uh, my patron, Red Wedding Planner. Very, very fun battle. I wanted to show you guys this, mostly just because it's an awesome battle. We've got uh, three chameleon, uh, sorry, regular skink skirmishers up front, no chameleons. Then the chameleon stalkers. Uh, two source scar vets, three skink cohort for a quote unquote front line, two solar engines, a fire salon, and. The Umbral Tide, uh, Regiment Renown Hunting Packs. Arcan the Black on the other side here. Kepper Guard, also a couple of Necropolis Knights. Tomb Guard with Halberds. Uh, skeleton Warriors, two Skeleton Chariots, and a Screaming Skull Catapult, which should be pretty good. You can see already doing some nice leadership damage to that Skink Cohort. Arcan's gonna have to be careful though. He does get a Kindle Flame proc here. Not too many for the Precursor weapons actually hit him, but let's just check. Oh, Kindle Flame is still active, just barely on those Necropolis Knights as they get hit by the first volley there. I don't think the Precursors got there quite in time for the Kindle Flame timing, but still really nice damage initially on the uh, Necropolis Knights. Also, Chameleon Stalker's Precursor weapons are going to be really good against Tomb Guard, especially the Kepper Guard base weak to fire here. I'm going to kind of pull back and see if they'll throw their missile weapons. Also, nice hit with the uh, Solar Engine there, getting the Blinded effect. And all that fun stuff. Shield of the Old Ones not popped, but here comes Flamestorm. I did, in fact, accidentally bring all the spells on my Fire Slot, so we're going to try and take advantage of that. Another Kindle Flame. Here come the Stalkers using their Precursors, and man, just look at the damage on the Kepper Guard. They are getting shredded by so many different sources. Meanwhile, on the other side, Necropolis Knights tying up a Solar Engine. I've completely forgotten one unit of Stalkers here, but uh, Chariots making their presence felt, charging through this unit of Chameleons. One thing about Tomb King's Chariots, they are very good, but they can kind of get traffic jammed a little bit because there's so many of them. <laughs> but uh, definitely nice side charge in here, breaking some more skink units. The Scarfettes will continue to try and hold, but over on this flank, I'm going to have to fall back with the skink skirmishers, just try and kite out these Necropolis Knights, maybe save the Umbral Tide if I can. Uh, yeah, we've already done a lot of damage to some high value units over on this flank, so I'm pretty happy about that, but... Uh, Sc Scorpion Legion now made their way over here. We can detach these stalkers as well. They just about routed, but they'll clean up this uh, Screaming Skull Catapult. Will definitely benefit me as I'm having a hard time keeping my other uh, chameleons online. Other skinks in general. Banishment there on some of the skeletons. And I was trying to drop a Piercing Bolts of Burning, but uh, Red Wedding Clan are able to dodge that with his Necropolis Knights. Probably just going to hit a little bit of those Tomb Guards. That's quite a bit of Winds of Magic. Essentially wasted. I mean, it does some okay damage, but my Solar Engines really haven't been able to fire much this entire game. I'm not too happy about that. And a nice Purple Sun over here does some friendly damage on the Scorpion Legion. Also does some pretty good uh, damage to my Chameleons there. Arcan uh, taking quite a bit of damage from various sources, but staying out of the range of the Solar Engines is probably a good idea. Here he's got the Umbral Tide that can potentially shoot him and obviously weakness to fire damage baseline and plus the Kindle Flame active right now really does not want to take that damage. Um, chariots though are in a position to bail him out. They're going to charge in here and just straight up call him into the uh, Salamanders here and because of their charge bonus, I mean 50, 58 charge bonus, 34 weapon strength, Salamanders not much melee defense, they will get taken apart by that in a big hurry. Skink Skirmishers also just tying up and also pulling out the Shabdi Summon is actually very cost effective for me, even if they're not doing much damage. They are keeping a considerable amount of resources uh, tangled up. And over here, this is not a great fight for me. I'm going to pop Shield of the Old Ones, try and do my best to defend. Cascading Fire Cloak as well to get some extra melee defense there up momentarily. But the Halberds plus Necropolis Knights is not a comfortable engagement for these uh, three big boys. We're going to try and bail them out if we can. But the Chariot's definitely a uh, menace to society at this point. Uh, Sora Scarvets made a long journey all the way out here to try and protect these uh, Skink Skirmishers from the Chariots. Now, again, Skink Skirmishers are just awesome for pulling units away and kind of being annoying. And they're cheaper than Chameleons. This role is better performed by Chameleons, there's no question. But they're just they're cheaper now, so it's easier to fit more volume in. Anyway... 
yeah, uh, Chariot's pulling on through. Not wanting to stay in combat with the Scarvets for too long, understandable. Necropolis Knight's also going to finish off a few isolated skirmishers there. Surprise, I've still, still got some Skink Cohort fighting, but that's okay. Center engagement, though, has me pretty worried. I'm trying to pull back some more resources to uh, screen out, like these uh, Tomb Guards here. You can see that one Forgotten Chameleon Stalker comes in pretty clutch. They're going to charge, and it is worthwhile with chameleon stalkers to cycle charge there's only a handful of infantry units in the game i would say it's worthwhile to cycle charge but especially since i still have a lot of the precursor weapons you can see from the ammunition bar there um pulling back allowing them to use that ammunition and then charging in uh, it doesn't look like they're going to use it are they maybe not anyway they have a decent charge bonus as well 25 charge bonus is definitely pretty solid Meanwhile, point blank blast arcan and uh, slon moves in to get a little bit of an attack he pulls away and then I just shoot him with a fireball, right? Because that's uh, how it goes with the fire slot. Nice Kindle Flame proc once again. Chameleons charged in, and I did miss the burst. You might have seen it out in the corner of the screen there uh, as they burst down those Tomb Guard with Halberds. Still, though, Chariots and Necropolis Knights quite healthy. Here, Red Wedding Planner is going to make a little bit of a mistake, and since he's my patron, um, you know, I, we fought all these battles and didn't get a chance to, like, watch them immediately after it and or go through them. I will say at this point, you would want to detach the chariots like mass blocking in the solar engine. There's uh, some merit to that, but since I've still got a few uh, tattered kind of scattered infantry units around, like, yeah, you want to avoid these scarvets if you can, but probably just going back, trying to take out these skink skirmishers before they're able to kind of form up in a dense formation. Uh, I do have the solar engine over here, though, that's going to continue to pressure them. That's okay. There's not a lot you can do about that. The Necropolis Knights are handling this solar engine here. You know, Arcan also danger close. Maybe can get a little bit of charging in here as well. But, uh, of course, as soon as I say that, he uh, moves the skeleton chariots back here, and they do start to get a little bit missile down. But I think maybe he hit, had he been on point a little bit earlier, rather than rushing them into this kind of center engagement, hard to say. I mean, it's... Very close game. Now slightly starting to turn in my favor as the Chariots and other units are finally sort of worn down. I only have a handful of Chameleons uh, Stalkers remaining really for my infantry, but another Banishment there, a little bit of Fireball and a Solar Engine. Double combo and Arcan suddenly probably in range to crumble, not quite. Pretty close though. And uh, feeling pretty comfortable once Arcan goes down that I should be just fine here. Necropolis Knights definitely had me worried for a minute there, but uh, are we able to persevere? I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, the Chariots do end up coming back, and despite taking a lot of fire, are able to break these Skink Skirmishers, so I don't know. Maybe it might not made that might not have made that much of a difference, considering Arcan was probably going to die there anyway. It's tough to say. Uh, you know, in the, sort of a big wild battle like this, there's a lot of things that could have turned out slightly differently, but um, in terms of build composition, I think this is probably pretty solid. The the Screaming Skulls, unfortunately, didn't have enough time to really get their value back. And I would say, from a build perspective, like I, I like them for getting Skinks off the field. But now, because Lizardmen have a lot more kind of mobile-ish infantry, and I do think Stalkers are going to be a, a pick you'll see frequently enough in this matchup, um, may be tough to protect. Yeah, I'd have to sort of sit and think about it a little bit, but... Maybe just honestly more stuff, like more infantry, just to hold back my skinks. Because with some extra numbers, you know, buying some some more time for these power units to get their work done, I do think they could have. Just the, the support sort of got evaporated a little bit quickly there. Tomb Guard with Halberds, though, you can see if they do get the chance to perform, will perform very well. Kepper Guard <laughs> into a fire build like this are going to have a tough time. So um, you can't always expect that. I do think they're a pretty decent pick in this matchup. They trade very well into Saurus. I just didn't bring any Saurus. Uh, Ark and the Black, 113 kills. Pretty impressive. Not that much value, but still good stuff. Love Necropolis Knights as well. Skeleton Chariots, both very cost-effective um, for the most part. I mean, didn't quite pay for itself in terms of this one, but it would have definitely had it had just a little bit more time to perform for me. I mean, 700 <laughs> value on a 400 cost Skirmisher is awesome. Uh, the Stalkers actually do very well here, and with the Kindle Flame timings, you know, that extra burst damage from their Precursor weapons is significant. Definitely helped me out quite a bit here, I would say. And, uh, yeah, the Umbral Tide didn't quite pay for themselves. Solar Engines also. Now that they're 1,200, I mean, this one pays for itself, this one does not. But still, that blinded debuff, quite nice. 114 kills on the Slon himself, so fun one, for sure. 
I really enjoyed enjoyed that battle, <laughs> sort of, uh, I don't know, for the Tomb King side, like, Arcan probably more meta on the horse, he does have a little bit more HP on the chariot, and he has more anti-infantry potential, certainly, against skinks, but I i don't know, I, I'd have to think about this matchup a little bit, but obviously Shanti Great Bows are a pretty good option here, um, but going with, like, a chariot-centric build, maybe you just take more chariots? I don't really know uh, from the Tomb King side. I need to play some more Tomb Kings myself and, and kind of explore some different matchups to see where they're at right now. But uh, Arkan's pretty solid against Lizardmen. Uh, definitely getting the more more uh, bodies on the field with the summons can be nice. A um, little bit vulnerable to fire damage, but I mean, Lizardmen have okay fire snipe. It's not incredible, but you kind of have to like tech into it to, to a degree. Um, like, Fire Slons are not the most <laughs> ideal pick, definitely. And something like uh, Neck Our Horseman, also I'm a big fan in this matchup for running down Skinks. So I might go with something like this. We'll start with the build itself. Three or four Skeleton Chariots might seem like too much. But uh, then what can we do? Maybe a couple of Shopti Great Bows. Let's just get a bunch of Skeletons to hold the line. And then that doesn't leave us a ton for Lord or Terror. So... Cetra could be a little bit risky here, but do we have enough to actually bring him is the question. Might have to find some extra funds here, maybe get rid of a skeleton or two. Yeah, you could fiddle around with the cost and abilities here a little bit, depending on what you want to do. Maybe you cut one Necrocar Horseman, something like that. Cetra's going to be pretty expensive, pretty vulnerable, but also uh, he gives you terror. He gives you kind of decent fighter lord all in one. As long as he's pretty mobile as well on the kitty. I mean, the 68 speed's pretty decent, so maybe something like this would work. I definitely think the chariots are a component of this in terms of getting rid of a lot of the skink infantry. They'll even do okay against the Saurus as well, but if you thought this was a little thin on numbers, you could t come in, maybe grab some Aryan or something. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm definitely no Tomb Kings expert. But uh, a lot of people think they're one of the worst factions in the game right now. I do think actually the chariot change could benefit them pretty significantly. I need to play with play some more myself with them and see. But certainly if we take it back to the Lizardman Fire build, uh, yeah, the Chameleon Stalkers do add a nice little component of this. And certainly in campaign where you can add all of these units together, right? Get like the blessed versions of some of these like blessed Fire Leech Bullas, you know... Uh, Salaman ancient salamander the extra flammable right because he has a and this is something you, you could even stack although ancient salamanders aren't that great of units they're okay certainly again more kindle flame stacking potential here with the fire slon so there's definitely some fun stuff you can do even in you know not that the fire leech blessed fire leech bullets are allowed in multiplayer but even you come in here something like this like this is definitely not as good, but it is something that you can do. You definitely can do. Um, yeah. I don't know. I kind of like going Flamestorm with banishment. That's just me. Something like this. And then what are we missing? Uh, solar Engine. Let's take one Solar Engine. Yeah, the Umbral Tide Hunting Pack. And then... Basically everything here does fire damage. We have enough for one more... For one more Fire Leech Bola. This is too far, I do think. Uh, like, you're missing some... This is kind of a little bit of had a meme, sort of an, as an aside. Like, you need some units that are actually strong in that matchup in order to meme properly. Like, this is too far, I think, which is why I had the Sora Scarvets, because, you know, foot characters generally, uh, especially anti-large AP foot characters, very good against Tomb Kings. So, like, this would be a slightly more sensible that <laughs> you at least have the two strong foot heroes to kind of hold... Uh, hopefully help carry things a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe someone give this a try and let me know how it goes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification every time I upload a new video. You'll be notified. Thanks again. See you next time.